se nota en tu andar Okay, good morning everybody. What we got here is uh, that front shoulder to that hog that I slaughtered out in the big thicket. Okay, so I just took out the freezer, but it's prior to that I soaked it in the brine for about a week and then um, seasoned it up real good. And, and also I got some, some pork belly from the local meat market. I also had that cut for me in about a real thick slices, about half an inch. So I usually smoke those, but today we're going to cut them up. Three pieces of them. We're going to cut them up. And we're going to mix it up together with the carnitas. That's going to be our, our carnitas. So right now I'm going to let everything thaw out. Um, the pork belly was also seasoned in the brine separately. Okay, and that's basically a brine with sugar, salt, um, cummins, and pepper, and um, vinegar. And let it sit, sit for about three or four days. And then I'll freeze it up and then take it out whenever I need it for smoking, barbecue, or stir fries for whatever I need. But this is what we're gonna do today with what we have on the table now. And we'll pick it back up once I get it all cut up and add some more seasoning and have it ready for the um, for the carnita fry out this afternoon. Okay, we'll pick it back up. All right, what I got here, I already got my bacon cut up in cubes right here. And I got my, my front quarter all cut up. And as you can see, it's pretty lean and it's a lot redder than regular pork. It's because it's it is a domesticated pork raised out in the, in the country, fed natural corn, oats, and grain, and raised naturally without no um, steroids or growth hormones or anything like that. So it's a very natural pork, very good tasting pork. It's not actually a wild pork that's running in the woods eating everything it can find. We actually have it control fed. So, but what I do have here is a commercial bacon uh so commercial pork belly so that's actually from the meat market so i have to add a little bit of pork because we are making carnita slash chicharrones type of um dish here so um once we have that um all cooked up mixed up together i'll be able to control how much fat i want in the meat once i get it all fried up and separated and and combine it into our tacos or or asian stir fries with general toes or however we're going to eat it if there's any left over but um, what I have for seasoning is a little bit of venison sausage seasoning, which is all the flavors, coriander, cloves, and everything I need for the sausage. It's a very good flavor. Um, the jerk seasoning in the coast, that's really good. It's got salt in there. Um, we got garlic, uh, Greek seasoning, and the cavendish for salt. It has a lot of salt. So that's 
all my salt and sodium right here and pepper and seasoning that I need. Um, quick dash, it's nice and sizzled right there. And we're fixing to get it in the cast iron skillet with some lard and get it cooked up and fried up. Okay, so we'll pick it back up then. All right, we got our carnitas on standby right here. Um, and I've got the, um, the lard cooking down. I got my salsa getting roasted up right there. And I just barely got the fire going. And um, everything we're going to use to infuse the oil and for the salsa is right here. So we'll just pick it up as I go along. And I'm getting started right now. Yeah, I'm going to make myself a little salsa here in the mocha Um uh, Got me some peppers from the garden. Variety of different peppers. Jalapeno, serranos. I got some garlic in there. Some tomatoes. And Cuban oregano and Mexican oregano. I'm gonna sizzle this up, get it nice and roasted up, and I'm gonna get it chopped up in a mo mocajete and pick it up from there. All right, to infuse my oil, I already put some green onion in there, and I got my salsa doing good. But to infuse the oil, I'm gonna add a few of these um, cayenne peppers, some bay leaves, some garlic, and some cloves. Um, just a small amount. There we go, and. Um, bay leaves some bay leaves and a few of these um cayenne peppers and some garlic and get that good and i'm fixing to get the meat in there and my salsa is doing good i gotta give it a little stir roasting up yeah. and we'll pick it back up when i get the meat in there all right, I got the carnitas cooking down. I already added the oranges. I also added all the seasonings I had, bay leaves, garlic, everything. Also, right here, what we have here is a, a kumquat, a preserved kumquat. When I had a kumquat tree, I um, preserved them, and it has um, anise and cinnamon in there, and I put a few of those in there. I use those to cook Asian dishes. I said might as well put them in here. They go good with pork. I got orange, lemon in there. I squeezed. It's cooking down. It's going to take a little while for it to render down. I got my tomatoes for my salsa right here. And I'm fixing to get that chopped up lightly. And I'm going to get it um, in a mocajete. And add one lime and a little bit of sea salt and pepper. And keep it going. But we got plenty of time. It's going to be a while before this is done. So I got my boxes right here for the rendering of the, of the fat. And we'll pick it up from there. Okay, they've been cooking for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, but I really don't keep track of time. As far as the texture, that's what I'm looking for, and I think it's about time we added the milk to crisp it up a little. I'm not going to use a whole can since I'm not cooking that much. There we go. We'll stir that in there and ride it out. There you go. All right, what we have here is the finished product, but not quite finished. We're gonna put it in the air fryer. It tastes really good. I've already been nipping at it. I transferred it from box to box, removing as much grease as possible. And now we're gonna let it cool off, wait for dinner time. And before that, we're gonna put it in the air fryer for about maybe 10 minutes at 350 and give it a nice crisp all the way around. And then we're going to chop it up and make some tacos. Um, it was really hands-on, so I couldn't really be taping while I did it. You know, we were dealing with hot grease, and I didn't want to make a mess. So, you know, we'll just pick it back up. But basically, that's what I did. I cooked it down for about, um, must have been about two hours till I finally finished it up. And, and then I fished it all out of there, trying not to make a mess, and used the boxes to absorb all the grease. I used about four of these. And I'm down to this one, and I'm going to transfer it to a tray on a elevated rack and it's going to fry up in the air fryer and we'll pick it up then okay what i'm going to do now um i got them off the the fryer and i got them drained from all the oil and it, it's really good right now real good and tender but i'm missing that exterior crunch and the milk that is coated with is going to actually create a nice little crunch to it but i'm gonna have to put it in the air fryer for about 10 minutes and that's gonna be prior to serving I'm going to get them all chopped up, and we're good to go. 
So right now it's going to be on standby for maybe an hour and a half. Okay, we got them elevated in the oven and we're fixing to air fry them for about 10 minutes. Nothing for you. All right, I just got them out of the air fryer. They're nice and toasty and I'm about to cut them up. I got my nopalitos, my tortillas ready to go. And I'm, I'm fixing to start hitting it up.